This movie opens with Thor in Muspelheim, the realm of fire, but none of the Aesir ever really went to Muspelheim. Some sources say this is because Muspelheim is actually so hot that only those who are native to it can survive there. <laughs> Thor, son of Odin. Surt, or Surtur, looks pretty badass here, but in actual Norse culture, he seems to have been depicted as more human-looking and with a long beard. Surtur, son of a bitch, you're still alive. I thought my father killed you, like, half a million years ago. Why would you think that? The prophecy of Ragnarok has him as a key figure in it. Has nobody told Thor the prophecy? Somebody should really tell him. It's a pretty important event, and also the name of this film. Okay, so, Ragnarok, tell me about that. Walk me through it. My time has come. When my crown is reunited with the Eternal Flame, I shall be restored to my full might. This Eternal Flame Surt's referring to is not in Norse mythology. Surt reaches his full potential when he either acquires or finishes crafting his flaming sword. Okay, so where is it, this crown? This is my crown, the source of my power! There is no mention of Surt having a crown. Anyway, it sounds like all I have to do to stop Ragnarok is rip that thing off your head. <laughs> but Ragnarok has already begun! Has it? Have any of the signals of Ragnarok happened? Ragnarok is supposed to be preceded by three years of Thimble Winter. Spider-Man Homecoming came out just a few months before this, and there wasn't any Fimble Winter there. Has Balder even been killed? He hasn't appeared at all in the MCU so far, so I have no idea. Maybe Surt thinks Ragnarok is here because his sword seems to be finished, but if that's his legendary flaming sword, why isn't it flaming? You have made a great mistake, Odin son. I make great mistakes all the time. Everything... Seems to work out. For anyone wondering what these creatures are, Surt does have an army in the myths known as the Sons of Moosebull. They are also called fire giants. And if you're now wondering why they aren't giant, well, giant in Norse mythology doesn't always mean huge. It's just the name for certain races who are sometimes gigantic and sometimes human-sized. Yes, it's confusing, but that's what happens when things don't get properly translated. I'm down! Running short on options! Um, Scourge? This Scourge character is not in Norse mythology. I'm sorry about that thing with the Tesseract. I just couldn't help myself. I know. I'm a trickster. Yes. Just so mischievous. Yes. <laughs> sorry about that time I turned you into a frog. It was a wonderful joke. It was indeed hilarious. I know you're referencing the comics here, but that still didn't happen in the myths, and it's my job to point that out. Sorry, Marvel fans, you're not allowed to have fun. So it's, um, back to Midgard for you, is it? Nope. <laughs> I've been having this reoccurring dream lately. Every night I see Asgard falling to ruins. That's just a silly dream. Science of an overactive imagination. Possibly. But then I decide to go out there and investigate. And what do I find with the nine realms completely in chaos? Well, one of those realms is Asgard, which you are currently standing in. Doesn't look completely chaotic to me. Thor Odinson. God of Thunder. You can put down the umbrella. Worth has uh, wizards now. <laughs> well, it's not the first time, Thor. In Old Norse culture, there were several people who were believed to wield a form of magic called Sather. Sure, it originally came from Vanaheim, but it was still very much practiced on Earth. 
I know we failed you, but we can make this right. I failed you. It is upon us, Ragnarok. No, I've stopped Ragnarok. I put an end to Serta. No. It's already begun. She's coming. My life was all that held her back, but my time has come. Odin, you realize you don't have to die here. You can just eat one of the golden apples of Idun and you'll be restored to your prime. I know you have some. They were all over the table in the first movie. I cannot keep her away any longer. Oh, who are you talking about? Goddess of Death. Hela. A firstborn. Your sister. Your what? Okay, first of all, the Goddess of Death is named Hell. Not Hella. Why does Marvel keep adding random A's at the end of Norse names? Second, Odin's firstborn was Balder, wherever the Helheim he is. Third, Hell isn't even a child of Odin. She is the daughter of Loki and Anger Boda. Fourth, Odin says Ragnarok is coming because Hell is coming, but Hell is not one of the many signals of Ragnarok. There's an army of Draugr that'll show up for it, sure, but that army will be led by Loki and Hrim, not Hell. A violent appetites grew beyond my control. Couldn't stop it, so I imprisoned her, locked her away. No, Odin prevented Hel from becoming a threat by putting her in charge of Helheim straight from childhood, a position she seemed to enjoy. She draws her strength from Asgard, and once she gets there, her powers will be limitless. She does not draw strength from Asgard, and is in fact never identified as an enemy of the gods in any known story. I love you, my sons. Look at that. Remember this place. Home. Odin does not die before Ragnarok, nor is this how he dies. He gets eaten alive during the battle by the wolf Fenrir. One of the things that makes Hel unique is that her appearance is split right down the middle, with one side looking lively and beautiful, while the other side looks completely dead. Not sure why we couldn't have done that here. Neo. Before your queen. I don't think so. It's not possible. Darling, you have no idea what's possible. <laughs> There is no information that would suggest Hell has the power to lift or destroy Mjolnir. Though honestly, there isn't a ton of info about her. But Mjolnir is specifically described as indestructible by the dwarves who created it. It's come to my attention that you don't know who I am. I am Hela, Odin's firstborn. The commander of the legions of Asgard, the rightful heir to the throne, and the goddess of death. Hel's existence was not kept secret from the realms. Would be pretty hard to do that when she literally rules over the realm of the dead. My father is dead, as are the princes. You're welcome. We were once the seat of absolute power in the cosmos. Our supremacy was unchallenged. That's not true. One of the earliest Norse stories was when Asgard went to war with Vanaheim and the two realms fought to a standstill. Neither came out on top. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> Hell frequently spawns swords and other weapons to do battle in this movie. In the myths, there doesn't seem to be any combat weapon directly associated with Hell. Closest thing would be her kitchen knife, which was called Famine. Honestly, I think it would have been pretty fun to see her use that in combat. <laughs> Uh, 
Unfortunately, due to lack of any stories that in any way showcase Hell's fighting abilities, I cannot be sure whether or not she could single-handedly take down the entire army of Asgard. Hmm, <laughs> so? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Carlo? I pardon you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're officially pardoned. From life. <laughs> What? Wait, who are you referring to when you say, my god? You are a god. Are you referring to yourself? Your father? Someone higher up the chain of command? Did Snorri Sturluson turn you Christian? Sorry, I know this is a tiny thing to focus on, but that line really rose my eyebrows. We were unstoppable. I was his weapon in the conquest that built Asgard's empire. One by one, the realms became ours. But then, simply because my ambition outgrew his, he banished me, caged me, locked me away like an animal. Hell never fought in any wars, Asgard did not conquer the other realms, and Hell did not wield Mjolnir before Thor. Mjolnir was made specifically for Thor by Brock and Eitri to win a bet they made with Loki. Before that, Asgard's warriors were honored. Their bodies buried as heroes beneath this very palace. Well, Asgard's warriors are the Einherjar, and their bodies weren't buried in Asgard. Their souls live on in Asgard and are revived every day in Valhalla to prepare for Ragnarok. Fenris, my darling, what have they done to you? Fenris is Hel's pet in this film. In the myths, Fenris, or Fenrir, is actually Hel's brother, and her pet is a different giant wolf named Garm. Though to be fair, there are people who theorize that Fenris and Garm were actually just two different names for the same wolf. Even if that's true though, Fenrir was not dead at any point before Ragnarok. He was tied up by the gods using a powerful golden rope called Gleipnir. Fun fact, Hel is also said to have a three-legged horse named Hel Hest. But this, the eternal flame. With the eternal flame, you are reborn. I've missed you. I've missed you all. Hell didn't need some eternal flame to create an army of undead warriors. When Ragnarok begins, an army of Drogar will simply leave the underworld and take a ship to the battle. Owen, I bid you take your place in the halls of Valhalla. The brave shall live forever. How is Odin going to find peace in Valhalla when Asgard is currently under the rule of Hel? Valhalla is within Asgard. Plus, Odin couldn't go to Valhalla anyway because he didn't die in battle. Thor's not thinking this through. I used to want to be a Valkyrie when I was younger, until I found out that you were all women. There's nothing wrong with women, of course. I love women. Sometimes a little too much. Not in a creepy way, it's just more of a respectful appreciation. I think it's great that there is a, an elite force of women Warriors. It's about time. What do you mean, it's about time? Written legends of Valkyries have been around since the 13th century. When I was young, every great king had an executioner. Not just to execute people, but also to execute their vision. But mainly to execute people. Still, it was a great honor. I was Odin's executioner. And you shall be my executioner. Let's begin our conquest. I think this is a good time to bring up that Hell in the Myths actually had two servants, both named Lazy Walker, but neither of them appears here. Maybe they're busy yelling at their parents for the names they gave them. It's good. Where's the sword?
That sword is the key to opening the Bifrost. Okay, this isn't myth-related, but it's driving me nuts. Heimdall's sword is very clearly not the only key to open the Bifrost in these films. We very clearly saw Loki use the Gungnir spear to open it in the first movie. And that very spear was just shown next to Hell in the previous scene. Just use that! I thought the Valkyrie had all died gruesome deaths. Choose your next words wisely. I'm terribly sorry. It must be a very painful memory. <laughs> The Valkyries seem to be riding Pegasi here, which are from Greek mythology and do not appear in Norse. Valkyries are actually capable of flying on their own, either magically or with wings depending on the portrayal. This scene also shows nearly all of the Valkyries being wiped out by hell in ancient times, which did not happen. The majority of the Valkyries were still alive up until Ragnarok. Also, which Valkyrie even is this character? They only ever seem to call her Valkyrie, as though she doesn't have another name. But the Valkyries did have names like Brunhilde, Thrud, Regenleaf, etc. Etc, etc, etc. I've got a peace offering. Surprise! Regular chains are not enough to restrain Loki. When the gods imprisoned him, they had to use the entrails of his son Narfi to successfully bind him. Oh, can, can I just do a, a quick FYI? I was just talking to him just a couple of minutes ago, and he was totally ready to kill any of us. He did try to kill me. Yes, me too, for many, many occasions. There was one time when we were children, he, he transformed himself into a snake, and he knows that I love snakes. So I went to pick up the snake to admire it, and he transformed back into himself, and he was like, Yeah, it's me! And he stabbed me. We were eight at the time. People keep telling me that this little story is supposed to be a mythology Easter egg, but if it is, I cannot for the life of me figure out how. There is no story I can find that represents this at all. My best guess is maybe it's some kind of reference to Loki's son Jormungandr? Feel free to let me know in the comments, because I'm stumped. painful. Oh dear, brother, becoming predictable. I trust you. You betray me round and round in circles we go. See, Loki, life is about, it's about growth, it's about change, but you seem to just want to stay the same. I guess what I'm trying to say is that you'll always be the god of mischief, but you could be more. You know, funnily enough, Loki actually did grow and change in mythology, but not in a good way. He was originally a mischievous protagonist who got on people's nerves, but was still an ally to the Aesir at the end of the day. However, when Christian influence spread around, Loki was equated with the devil and soon became a straight-up evil villain who murdered the god Baldur just for kicks. So he definitely had character development, just in the opposite direction of these films. Here's the difference between us. I'm Odin's firstborn, the rightful heir, the savior of Asgard. And you're nothing. So simple. Even a blind man could see it. Thor did not lose an eye at any point before or during Ragnarok. Hey man. I'm Korg, this is me. We're gonna jump on that spaceship and get out of here. Wanna come? Loki actually does arrive by ship to Ragnarok, but surprise, surprise, it's not a spaceship. It's the ship of the dead, Nagalfar, a ship made entirely of fingernails and toenails. And he doesn't come to save the Asgardians, he comes to fight against them, bringing with him an army of Draugr and giants. But in this film, there are no giants, and the Draugr were already here before him. Welcome home. I saw you coming. Of course you did. <laughs> I know this is gonna shock people, but there were actually no alien gladiators in the tale of Ragnarok. 
a valiant effort, but you never stood a chance. You see, I'm not a queen or a monster. You are a queen, though, of Helheim. I've pointed that out multiple times. Weren't you listening? I'm the goddess of death. What were you the god of again? Even when you had two eyes. You'd see only half the picture. It's too strong. Without my hammer, I can't. Are you Thor, the god of hammers? Hmm? That hammer was to help you control your power, to focus it. It's never your source of strength. It's a bit hard to comment on whether Thor's lightning powers come from him or his hammer, because technically, there is no real mention of Thor controlling lightning at all in Norse mythology. The only surviving hints that he might are that Thor's name means thunder, and Mjolnir is sometimes said to mean lightning maker. Some say that his connection to lightning comes from people believing that a lightning bolt was actually Thor's hammer being thrown across the sky at a giant, and the sound of thunder was his hammer striking. There was a Christian writer named Adam of Bremen who said Thor governed over lightning, so that might be legit. Basically, this is one of the vaguer myth topics. Fenrir was actually slain by the god Vidar during Ragnarok, as revenge for the wolf killing his father Odin. Asgard's not a place, it's a people. Loki, this was never about stopping Ragnarok, this was about causing Ragnarok. Search his crown, the vault. It's the only way. Well move, brother. Even for me. With the eternal flame, you are reborn. That's not how Ragnarok begins. There are several catalysts that kick off Ragnarok, such as Loki breaking free from his imprisonment, Fenrir breaking free from Gleipnir, Garm escaping Helheim, the Ship of Nails being completed, Surt's sword being completed, the three sacred roosters crowing, Heimdall blowing Yallerhorn, etc. But absolutely none of that has been shown in this film. There were so many options, why on earth would you make up a new one? You want Asgard? It's yours. Whatever game you're playing, it won't work. You can't defeat me. No, I know. <sighs> but he can. No! Tremble before me, Asgard. I am your enemy. Surt is supposed to reach Ragnarok by riding there with his army destroying the Bifrost in the process. Also, Ragnarok doesn't take place in Asgard. It takes place on a battlefield in Midgard called Vigrider. So this is Ragnarok, huh? Just hell insert fighting. Yainheriar, Droger, Fenrir, and Odin have all been killed off beforehand, unlike the myth. We also don't have the army of giants, Hrim, Garm, Jormungandr, the armies of mankind, the Valkyries, any Aesir or Vanir. We don't have the clash between Nidhogg and Hreisvelgir that destroys the world tree. We don't have Freyr's battle with Surt. Really, not a lot of actual Ragnarok in this Ragnarok movie. The damage is not too bad, as long as the foundations are still strong. We can rebuild this place. It will become a haven for all peoples and aliens of the universe. Def nah, those foundations are gone. Sorry. When Cert dies, his flames actually destroy Midgard, not Asgard. It's wrong. So, let's talk about all the guys who are still alive but shouldn't be. 
During Ragnarok, Thor is supposed to get bitten by the serpent Jormungandr and die from its poison shortly after slaying it. Heimdall and Loki are supposed to kill each other in combat, but not only are they both alive, they're on the same side. There are tons of other significant deaths, but none of the gods involved in them have even appeared in these films. Also, the characters who are actually supposed to survive Ragnarok are nowhere to be seen. Thor's sons Magni and Modi aren't here, and they're supposed to inherit Mjolnir after Thor's death. But ironically, the hammer is dead and Thor is alive. Baldur is also supposed to come back from the dead after Ragnarok, but still no sign of him. I guess he'll just forever be a quick little reference in Loki Season 2. Such poverty of imagination. Is somebody feeling a little left out that they're not up there? No. Why might they include Baldur? No one's even heard of him. Sure they have. Baldur the Brave. <laughs> from it, destiny arrives all the same. And now it's here. Or should I say, I am. Thanos refers to himself as destiny here, but the Norse personification of destiny is the three Norns who weave the tapestry of fate. What do you mean I'm taking him too literally? So, instead of killing each other during Ragnarok, Heimdall and Loki get killed by someone else directly after Ragnarok. Yeah, okay. We see both the sun and the moon here, which is a bit weird considering they should have recently been eaten by two giant wolves named Skoll and Hati. No, slow down and I'll, I'll you're spell totally it out rambling. for you. No, I'm not. Lost me. Look, you know how you're having a dream, and in the dream you gotta pee. Yeah. Wow, the world is looking surprisingly normal, despite the fact that Ragnarok just happened. To put it into perspective, the events of Fimble Winter and Ragnarok include the world plunging into darkness, all of humanity turning on each other, killing each other, behaving like animals, the oceans being poisoned by Jormungandr and the sea life being wiped out, the earth, forests, and air itself being burnt by Surt's flames, ash falling from the sky like snow, literally all of humanity being wiped out except for two people named Leif and Leif Thrasir. You get the idea. It's all pretty messed up. Sure, the world is eventually reborn and the two survivors repopulate humanity, but it sure as hell doesn't happen this fast. Who the hell are you guys? Ah, that's the wrong version of hell, Marvel. Come on, you got it right in Age of Ultron. What happened here? You know, I'm 1,500 years old. Actually, Thor is likely much older than that. While his followers were most prominent about 1,200 years ago, references to Thor have been found that date all the way back to the 1st century AD, which would suggest Thor is at least 2,000 years old. Wait. Nidavellir is often said to be the same realm as Svartalfheim, but we saw Svartalfheim in the Dark World movie, and now Nidavellir is a separate place? Marvel, how many realms are there in this freaking continuity? You keep saying there are nine, like in the myths, but you've pulled Nornheim and Raya out of God knows where, Svartalfheim and Nidavellir are separate, and in the last movie, Thor talked about the nine realms as though they were separate from Asgard. That puts us at 13 realms! Also, Nidavellir is supposed to be underground, not in... space. I hope these dwarves are better at forging than they are cleaning. Petri, wait! Stop! Thor? Dwarves are not gigantic. 
They are actually shorter than average. One would think that would be obvious, but here we are. This is the plan? We're gonna hit him with a brick? It's a mold. A king's weapon. Meant to be the greatest in Asgard. In theory, it could even summon the Bifrost. Does it have a name? Stormbreaker. Yeah, it's a bit much. This Stormbreaker weapon is not in Norse mythology. Well done, boy. That's Nidavir! Sunlight is supposed to turn dwarves to stone, as evidenced by the tale of Alvis, and yet Eitri apparently frequently uses an equivalent of it here in his forge. Lord Warthus. Let the dark might fly through me one last time. All fathers give me strength. Why are you saying all fathers as though it's plural? There is only ever one Allfather in Norse mythology, Odin. Hi, thanks for watching, and thanks so much to the incredibly good-looking people on Patreon who make these videos possible. People like Evil Angel, Lilith Jade Vaughn, Gilda Ramos, Double Ditto, Zach Horgan, Gavin Lothar, Interesting Name, Matthew Owen, Miyaka041, Shadow Slaughter, Soaring Rock, Adam Whaley, Anthony Miano, David Walton, Gwyn016, Justin Pruett, Man Eating Mare, X Arcade, Zagard, AC Stevens08, Airtake, Tank 58, Alex, Aaron Fanner, Average Brexit Geezer, Brad Kirkwood, Kane Kendrick, CJ the Boy, Damien Fireheart, Dubious, Elijah Vixena, Feel the Wrath, Forgetful Dragon, Garrett Peterson, Geelys, Habalon, James H., Jeff Jeffington, Jeremy Sunday, John Kratos, Cade, Kerry 692 Kevin, Lassie Ehrenreich, Logan Krekic, Marco Gonzalez, Maria Potter, Nathaniel Frey, Pug765, Quick to Adjust, Ricky Nebowie, Saint Wolfman, Seth Martin, Shaquille James, Shipka, Sunsinger, and The Jesus. Thank you guys so much. The continued support really does hit me right here, and I will always appreciate it. If you guys want to join up and get your name in the credits, get earlier access to certain stuff, and access to exclusive stuff, be able to message me directly, um, you might want to check out the Patreon, but even if you don't, you support me just by watching my stuff and being a fan. Thanks for that.